the concept of single line playing, as Caesar just described it to me, is one of the three traditions of jazz soloing. The first tradition you may be well aware of is was soloing either off of the melody, meaning using it as a springboard for decoration or variation, and filling in in between the melody, but the melody set the tone. So when the saints come marching in or something, they would you know, filling in, but it's still the melody. So then the second tradition is the one you mentioned where they grow. They're playing the chord changes. That is, a, it's bebop thinking applied to more old style notes. There, used a lot of these kind of notes in there. Right? Saints come marching in. And the third tradition is like for you know that that kind of thing where you play off of uh, chord changes that take the same scale. If you play like F minor seven to C eleven. Scale that contain notes that both those chords have. Tonal center soloing. Tonal soloing. You take a tone center and you solo off of the chords. When people jammed on Light My Fire in the 60s and they go, if a guy wanted to, he could play one scale over both chords. He didn't have to take a separate set of notes for the second one. So that's common. The blues is like that too. You can play that over everything, right? Throughout. So that's the third tradition. So you're more interested in that second one, if I understand you right, making every yeah, chord change yeah. stand out, which is a great, fine one. That the culmination of it is right after the. Well, it's Charlie Parker and then the Coltrane era too. Those two eras, uh, that taken to the height. It still exists. If you hear this guy, somebody Warner and Kenny Potter, Potter and some fellow named Warner, they play Giant Steps. Guys still play those tunes and they, they play pretty amazingly well these days, people. So what don't you know how to do? You can't make it sound musical. Well, I can't make it sound musical. Like, I know what I'm supposed to do based on your books and all that. Uh, given the chord, try to find that scale that matches the chord, either the chord form over the chord shape. So you studied the books a little bit? Yeah, I studied the books a little bit, but I just can't get them musically. I can't get it together to sound musical, like something like that. Because like the other day I was hearing Ted Green, I mean not Ted Green, <laughs> it's like a Grant Green. Grant Green, yeah. yes. Grant Green. Okay, he was playing Best of My Mucho. Okay, that's the song I know. That's the chord. The chord changes aren't that many. That's true, right? And it's. I don't think it modulates. If it does, it's just probably one change in there. Well, I've never heard Grant play. I've heard West play. He plays yeah. it. Well, um, Grant plays it almost like West. Same, but I mean, he plays it really nice. I mean, throwing. He's, he's going over the changes and and I, I try to follow a few few of the runs. And it don't seem. It doesn't seem that complicated. But but when he puts it all together, it's just so. It's just like wow, <laughs> you know. Well, it takes years of maturity, you know, yeah. to practice. What can you do, man? It's a slow process. I, I sympathize, I empathize. I've been there myself. I'm a little there sometime, like just now. I didn't feel like it just wasn't happening great for me. But, you know, it does get better if you work at it. There's no doubt. I know you're a busy man. You can't put in five hours a day. If you could put in five hours a week on your single line, it'll go forward. Mm -hmm. uh, take one short progression that you love mm -hmm. and refuse to give up until you create music on it. If you fail on 99 times, but the 100th time you succeed, then it's still work well done. If you're practicing efficiently, how would you go about that? I'm going to give you a challenge and watch how you work. Um, let's just take the changes to best of Let's see, D minor, key of D minor. I've done it in that key, yeah. Say So first you have to say something on D minor. Do you want to play it in a six feel like Wes did that? So, yeah, here we go. 
two, let's see, one, two, three, oh, one, two, three. Okay, anyway, no, uh, no, no, we're not going to do the melody because I already know you can phrase the okay. melody. I want to hear you actually try to solo. Sorry. Okay, but well in this case, then it'll, it's going to be probably just by ear. I'm going to hear your changes by ear then. You don't know, like say D minor, you don't okay, have. Okay, D minor. Play that again. Now that's called D7. See, that's that's dominant seven. Okay. okay, you're right. It's not that I'm right. That's just how those notes are. Okay, here's like something I would do. Well, here's a. You know what this is, right? You're on the right track with something like that. Let me show you some West patterns, okay? Okay. <laughs> Is that all D minor right there? Yes, it is. Sounds like a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's because the upper partials are so gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Wes is an upper chord tone man. He's not a scale man. Some guys are more scalar by far than Wes, but he's not. He's in love with the higher partial chord tones. These are basic to him. He barely touches these notes compared to how often he touches the higher ones, and especially for lingering. So. Let's do this together. We'll take the charted out area of fret 7 through 10. Okay. 7 through 10. 7 through here. So your pinky would be on the root, low root. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're going to play the following notes. Every other tone in the Dorian scale. Now Dorian's the minor 7 scale. It's the one that just says of course, the lowered third, but also the lowered seventh. So we're going to go one, flat three, five, flat seven. Now, I don't want you to use your ear as much as your eyes unless you can't see my hand. Can you see my hands again? Then the ninth is here. Let's hear how this. at the 11. Instead of jazz ace at a medium tempo, jazz ace are too slow. They don't cut it at this tempo, but triplets are. Play playing only Dorian notes there. These are little groups. Besides what we just did, you have triad groupings. Wes is real fun of triads, too. Try this. This is a wide angle lens, right? Yeah. Somebody brought a Sony in just like that the other day and they said, Oh, it's a wide angle. Don't worry, man. Just sit and you know, yeah, it's make sure. I just, if you haven't, just so I'd hate for you to get home. No, that's good. And not see that left hand. The right hand you don't have to see because yeah, I, I see your left hand real good. good. My right hand, I'm just, uh, I don't even know which fingers I'm using here. It's just something easy. Oh, I see what I'm doing. If it's on the low strings, I use my thumb. Everything else, I just do the two finger dance here. At this tempo, at least. So, this is a triad, D minor backwards. So, for technique, we don't hop the note, we start the first note way down below the tip, and then the second one is on the tip. That's it. Remember me showing a picture in my book of that yeah. roll? Okay. Next, try it if you descend in the Dorian. You might say the word's supposed to be soaring over D minor, but this was 11 and 9 okay. and flat 7, it turned out. This is another try it. That's the B diminished. 
maintains a mid-range 13. Wes is one of the only jazz guitarists who ever lived who likes the 13 enough to play it in the mid-range even. <laughs> So the next try would be A minor. After this, let's review. Yeah, let's review those again until it feels good. Is that it? Without pausing. Without pausing, with without again, without pausing. Okay, now you're still doing the bunny hop pausing. over here. No, you're not pausing now, but we just have to get you used to this. Does that feel workable for you? Yeah, I just yeah. have to concentrate. You don't have to do too much motion. You can do it a little bit from the finger. See how your hands moving? No, that's okay. Maybe if if it's no hardship on you, you can just move the finger. Economy of motion, you're a classical guitar player. Let's make this transition. finger super resists this what we're trying to do but just talk to her she'll do it Here they are, all, all of them in this position. It's not like you're going to always play so many of them in one lick, but you want to have them ready. Let's see. That's the lowest and that's the highest in that four fret area. Again, they're just the notes of minor Dorian scale. So like you start off with that top note da, 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 and then you go into like the, the last of the last note of the, of the first phrase is your beginning note of the second phrase? No. No, no it's not quite like that. No. There are things complicated like that. It's just three notes, three more. If we did it myself say, probably said it to you, jazz lives above the seventh, it does. But when you're playing Dorian triads, you're getting a lot of cool notes above the seventh automatically. You want to practice fourths. Here's fourths in Dorian. Okay, so the first one was called just what? Diatonic. Diatonic. Triads. Triads from the top note down. 
these are diatonic fourth intervals, two notes at a time. I mean at a time, but groupings of two. It's a everything descending. I have two or three or four reasons for it. I'll just say whatever I can remember. I know there's a lot of reasons. First of all, in a band situation, you can't solo down here a lot unless they're being real quiet. This doesn't cut through. But any notes you touch up high do seem to come out more. Just the way human frequency hearing is, right? So we tend to solo more on the skinny strings than the big ones. Even if you love the sound here, you just won't be able to live there very much you'll be off of there unless again the band comes down while you're soloing and gets quiet then you can solo down on two strings if you want I, if I'm with the right people or especially because I do it by myself sometimes I solo just on these two strings I just try to play bass solos or something with two notes it's just fun but obviously the room's got to be quiet <laughs> you can't have a loud drummer they'll wipe just one instrument the drummer will wipe all that out so, another reason you want to learn descending is because you were trained to do scales if you've read Western culture literature from the bottom up. So, you've practiced more here. That means you probably haven't done scales as often descending or intervals or anything. So, we're weaker that way, so we might as well take care of it. Once you can do them descending, you'll find you can do them ascending a lot easier. They won't take as long. It's not like twice as long then. But you may never get around to the descending if you like the rest of the planet as much anyway, if you don't work on it. So we just bang on it right away. So these intervals were fourths from the low note first. We're still talking about the first chord of Bessemer. It hasn't even changed to G minor yet. It's okay. Well, is, that, is it okay you move it up a little? I sat up a little. You might want to. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, you might want to. Yeah. You want me to move this down there? move wherever you need to. It's your call, man. It's um, okay, that's You're the fine. one that's paying the money. I want you to get your money. So. Okay, that's good then. I get it. I'll sit up like this for a while. Sometimes when I sit all day long, I have to shift a little. This is your butt. Just, I don't know. You can understand. Yeah. I haven't had a break yet. Today's is noon, so the butt just yeah, going, whoa. So. <laughs> not complaining, just explaining. So, so all that you were just still in the D minor. Oh yeah, it's Dorian. Okay. Now then we're gonna do the fourths from the top note down, etc. Okay. Watch the fingers make them roll where they need to. With triplets now. Just seems to have a good sound. It's not as boring as jazz ace at this tempo are not exciting. Right. Especially with scale flies, it just sounds like a total beginner now. It's not so great. Those were triad, block triads. Dorian first inversions where the roots on top. Because you can sneak some chords in your solos. I'm not saying don't do any eighth notes. song no matter how it's played it seems so back to this thing after you can do your fourth diatonic fourths low note first or high note first then you do two melodic patterns that alternate they go as follows I went up one and down the other Sorry. Get 
the idea? Mm -hmm. And then the opposite. High note first and low note. rhythmic we have groups of four notes that we expect to hear in this way we expect to feel them that way right and here we are feeling them the accents of the triplet groupings of da 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 collide with the booty da da booty da da create cross accents it's fun the ear doesn't know what to make of it for a moment. It definitely sounds semi-sophisticated at worst. Better than just, just playing a blues lick when you're stuck. Better use a pick. Pick, pick in fingers. Ah, see. Talk about. Let's go to the G minor. For G minor, there's your Dorian scale. You could also play the Aeolian scale. Could have been. Could have had this note. 